Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. After the anterior teeth have been set for the immediate denture, we can then proceed with the posterior, the setting of the posterior teeth. The posterior teeth that we are going to use for this exercise are a functional tooth, True Bite Functional Tooth F32. This functional tooth is the same type of a tooth that you may choose to use in the clinic. To start setting the posterior teeth, we first, of course, need to make a stabilized base plate. Oftentimes, a stabilized base plate only covering the posterior uh, of the master cast will need to be looted into place with a small amount of sticky wax. For this exercise, we are using the same anterior and posterior teeth as were used in the treatment of a patient. Since the patient has natural mandibular teeth, the occlusal surfaces of the maxillary replacement teeth will need to be ground slightly to achieve proper articulation. In order to have tooth to grind, it is often advisable and necessary to open the occlusal vertical dimension by the incisal pin slightly. I am opening this approximately one half of a millimeter. Another problem that we oftentimes have in setting teeth for an immediate denture is, particularly in the area of the premolars, is that we do not have a great deal of inner arch space. This necessitates two things. One, grinding on the stabilized base plate. And you can see here that I'm grinding this base plate until the base plate material is just paper thin. The other thing that we will need to do is to hollow grind the replacement tooth. And this is a procedure that we need to do quite frequently for immediate dentures and also a great deal of regular dentures in which we have very little inner arch space. Now, hollow grinding the tooth does not make the tooth in the cervical occlusal direction shorter. It just makes the neck of the tooth thinner. Now, we will take a small amount of pink wax, place the pink wax, of course, in the premolar area and sealing it to the base plate, slightly softening it, and then placing our first bicuspid tooth. Now, the requirements of this tooth are such that it, of course, makes good interdigitation with its mandibular antagonists. Specifically, that the maxillary lingual cusp make a good sound contact with the central fossa or central sulcus of the mandibular tooth antagonist. The other requirements, of course, involve the articula articulator settings that we have derived from our patient. The condylar elements uh, for this exercise are 20 degrees bilaterally the Bennett angle should be set at 15 degrees, and the incisal guidance on the incisal table should also be set at 20 degrees. After that tooth has been set properly, the condylar elements are freed, and the articulator is allowed so that the teeth can pass over each other. 
and we can see that we have a very heavy buccal contact, which is our working contact, and that needs to be reduced. As you remember, we have slightly opened the occlusal vertical dimension with our incisal pin, so we can reduce, we need to reduce this uh, slightly at this time. We will place some marking ribbon in between the teeth and carefully move the articulator without jarring the tooth loose from the wax in order to pick up our, our contact. Now with either a mounted green stone or a mounted gemstone, we can carefully reduce this heavy working contact. Closing the articulator again and allowing it to move freely, we can see that we have a very smooth contact of the tooth in the working direction. And also we have contact of the maxillary lingual cusp passing over the mandibular buccal cusp in our balancing direction. All during this motion, the sizal pin is uh, staying on the table. Now, the setting of the remaining posterior teeth are very similar to setting the first bicuspid. The stabilized base plate, again, will need to be slightly reduced in order to allow us to set this tooth properly. The second bicuspid has been hollow ground and set in a similar manner. We are now ready to perfect the occlusion. And as you can see, as I go into a working motion, there's a heavy working contact on the mesial uh, buccal cusp. So again, we will mark with articulating ribbon and go through our excursions. And then we will need to reduce a portion of the mesial buccal cusp. Now, as we go into a working motion, we can see that the teeth pass over each other very smoothly, and we have good working contact. And we also have a balancing contact on the lingual cusps as they pass over their mandibular antagonists. Now, we will continue to set the posterior teeth in a similar manner uh, as these bicuspids. The posterior teeth bilaterally have now been completed. As we close the instrument and move it through its lateral excursions, you can see that the teeth pass over each other freely with no interferences. The incisal pin during this movement stays on the table. You can see similarly on the opposing side, on the opposite side, that we have good working and balancing contact. Moving the articulator in a protrusive path, the anteriors are disarticulated slightly by the posteriors. The protrusive anterior uh, component, we were trying to uh, place back in the patient's mouth a similar protrusive uh, anterior arrangement as the patient had with the natural teeth. Now, the posterior base plate with the teeth set and slightly waxed can be used for a posterior 
try in if required or if desired. If it is desired, this base plate can be taken off the master cast, cleaned of, of wax, of course, and can be placed in the patient's mouth, usually uh, requiring a small amount of adhesive powder in order to uh, keep it in place. Then the poster occlusion can be checked with the patient. If that is not necessary or desired, this uh, arrangement can now be uh, waxed and sent to the laboratory for processing. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.